Hey friends, welcome back to the Offbit. Today we're going to be looking at using two GT430s and SLI. Will they be friendly and play as a team in games, or will they just slow each other down? Stay tuned, and we'll find out. Here we are, our two GT430s. Now life in the GT430 world isn't fast. So we're gonna kick back and just cruise through this like a GT430. These are two cards that have been sitting in my collection for some time, collecting dust. But today we're gonna pull them out and see if they can play as a team. Now the GT430 is a Fermi base card. It was released in October 11, 2010. The GT430 is an NVIDIA mid-range card. Now today, we have two cards. The one on the left is an N430 GT-MD1GD3 forward slash LP2. Basically, this is the MSI version of the GT430. The ASUS version we have here is the ENGT430 forward slash DI forward slash 1GD3 in brackets LP. Both cards hold one gig of DDR3 RAM. The MSI card has its RAM clocked at 1.8 gigahertz and its clock speed at 700 megahertz. The ASUS version, the core clock is at 700 megahertz and the memory clock is at 1.6 gigahertz. We're using the usual test bench today. So our CPU today is the Intel i5-760 running at 2.8 GHz. It is a quad-core CPU. Motherboard today is the Gigabyte H55M-S2H. RAM, we've got two sticks of 4 gig DDR3 RAM running at 1333 MHz. Our drives today is the one terabyte Western Digital Green Magnetic. We have a 240 gig Western Digital Green SSD. And for our OS drive, we've got a 120 gig Western Digital Green SSD. Our PSU is the Antec True Power Trio 550 Watt. Just a quick note before we get too far that the drivers that are used today are hack drivers. The GT430 does not natively support SLI. The software using that hacked the drivers is actually called Different SLI Auto. You can get this from GitHub or just click on the link I've put down in the comments. Okay, we're going to do a synthetic benchmark. So first off we have is Cinebench R15. So the GT430 on its own gave us 27.54 frames per second and in the SLI mode it gave us 28.87 frames per second. Giving us a small margin of improvement in SLI. Unigine Heaven gave the GT430 alone 96 points and actually had a de-improvement in SLI mode, only scoring 93 points. Moving on to 3D Mark's Fire Strike, the GT430 alone scored 726 points and in SLI mode we got 903 points. For the final bench test, we use Counter-Strike Source's Video Stress Test. GT430 on its own sim scored 726 points, and in SLI mode, it scored 903 points. Basically, this gave us about a 25% thereabouts improvement. Not bad. Alright, first game we're looking at is good old Fortnite. So our average frame rate was 16.4 frames a second, and I felt it. This is probably not a card you want to be playing Fortnite with. Maybe if you turn everything down and run in really low graphic detail and resolutions, maybe, but I'd say stay clear of it. And in regards to hacked video card drivers, 
this game will not run if you don't have signed drivers. So, you can forget doing GT 430s and SLI with Fortnite. Now, Fortnite's not the only game that doesn't run games because of unsigned drivers. So we found PUBG also is another one, but probably anything that uses any cheat detection engines. Okay, in Overwatch, the GT430 on its lonesome gave us an average of 52.6 frames per second. This game actually runs pretty good. Like, I was pretty happy with playing this. Yeah, the graphics, not fantastic, not super sharp, but still pretty competitive. Not as good as probably, you know, some of the other cards we've used, like 65, 70 with the overclock. But, mate, this game is great. Now, in SLI mode, we had a slight disapprovement at 52.4 frames per second. So, pretty much, SLI mode didn't actually help with Overwatch. Next up, we're running Sea of Thieves. We ran this at the curse setting, or better known as very low. So, this game didn't run too crash hot on the GT430, which I expected. So we got an average frame rate at 25.4 frames. Our 0.1% lows actually wasn't too bad at 11.2 frames per second. But wasn't a great gaming experience. Running the game with the GT430 is an SLI. Sort of made it worse. So amazingly enough, it really struggled. Now the drivers we use are a little bit older. So it might come down to that. But this game, don't run an SLI for the GT430. It's a real shame. I was hoping SLI was going to kick that frame rate a bit higher. But anyway, not meant to be. Last game today. I've left the best to last. Rocket League. So this game ran okay on the GT430 on its lonesome. So 32.7 frames per second for average frame rate. And 11.8 for 1% lows. And 0.1% lows was at 10.1. So that's not too bad. Not great. But, this is why I left the best to last. So in SLI mode, we basically doubled our performance in this game. Our average frame rate was at 58.5, and our lows, 1% lows, 22 frames per second, 0.1% lows, 14.7 frames per second. So, very playable. Incredibly good. So smooth. I didn't turn the detail up. Might be worth giving that a go and see how that affects it. But, for the most of it, this is easy gameplay with nice, easy frames. Well, might wrap this up. GT430 by itself, not a powerful card. But if you're doing any video editing or anything that uses GPU, maybe hacking the drivers and running two GT430s and SLO would be good to do. Game-wise, most of the time it didn't pay out. Because we were running hack drivers, we did run into problems with games running. I think this is more the anti-cheat component, so any games that are single player, it's probably fine. I did find in most of our games that SLI in these cards didn't help, but in one game, Rocket League, it doubled our frame rate. So there might be other games out there that will do the same. Now hacking the drivers is not an easy thing to do. Uh, it's a little bit tricky. There's a step-by-step -step guide that is given to you on GitHub. Basically one of the readme files that come when you download different SLI auto. Now, when you hack the drivers, you have to use an earlier version of the NVIDIA drivers. So some of the performance issues we had might have been because we are using earlier drivers. When I was running single card, we are using the last, latest drivers that NVIDIA had on their website. So... To sum it all up, look, if you don't have two GT430s, it's probably not worth going out to make it happen. Games only get more hungrier. The GT430, I think, is a little bit past its life expirement date now. You can probably still play a lot of new games if you're willing to drop the resolution and your graphics detail. Anyway, that's all i got for you today for the off bit. Now, if you want me to make a video on how to run cards in SLI that aren't meant to be, using the different SLI auto, just leave me some comments, just let me know. Now, if you like this video, don't forget there's a like button, and if you want to subscribe, please subscribe. It encourages me to keep on making content. 
Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time on the Off Bit.